Have you ever wonder on what will happen without electricity in our modern lives? What happens when our main electric supply gets cut off by several reasons? Is it due to municipality cutoff, tripping of circuit breaker, or wire eaten by rat? Whatever it is. It is very essential, especially in commercial buildings to have backup power in case of emergency. So hello everyone and greetings of peace. Sit back and relax as we will tackle electric generators. How does it work? How do electric generators work? An electric generator is a device that converts mechanical energy obtained from an external source into electrical energy as the output. Electric generators are useful for homes, shops, offices, etc., which face frequent power outages. They act as a backup to ensure that the appliances receive uninterrupted power supply. In distant areas, where electricity from the main line cannot be accessed, electric generators act as the primary source of power supply. When working on project sites where electricity cannot be accessed from the grid, electric generators can be used for powering machinery or tools. It is important to understand that a generator does not actually create electrical energy. Instead, it uses the mechanical energy supplied to it to force the movement of electric charges present in the wire of its windings through an external electric circuit. This flow of electric charges constitutes the output electric current supplied by the generator. This mechanism can be understood by considering the generator to be analogous to a water pump, which causes the flow of water, but does not actually create the water flowing through it. The modern-day generator works on the principle of electromagnetic induction discovered by Michael Faraday in 1831-32. Faraday discovered that the above flow of electric charges could be induced by moving an electrical conductor, such as a wire that contains electric charges, in a magnetic field. This movement creates a voltage difference between the two ends of the wire, or electrical conductor, which in turn causes the electric charges to flow, thus generating electric current. A conductor coil, a copper coil tightly wound onto a metal core, is rotated rapidly between the poles of a horseshoe-type magnet. The conductor coil along with its core is known as an armature. The armature is connected to a shaft of a mechanical energy source, such as a motor, and rotated. The mechanical energy required can be provided by engines operating on fuels such as diesel, petrol, natural gas, etc. Or via renewable energy sources such as a wind turbine, water turbine, solar-powered turbine, etc. When the coil rotates, it cuts the magnetic field which lies between the two poles of the magnet. The magnetic field will interfere with the electrons in the conductor to induce a flow of electric current inside it. Features of electric generators Power Electric generators with a wide range of power output capacity are readily available. Low as well as high power requirements can be met easily by choosing an ideal electric generator with matching power output. Fuel Multiple fuel options such as diesel, petrol, natural gas, LPG, etc. are available for electric generators. Portability there are generators available in the market which have wheels or handles fitted on them so that they can be moved from one place to another easily. Noise Some generator models have noise-reducing technology, which allows them to be kept at close proximity without any noise pollution problems. Main Components of a Generator The main components of an electric generator can be broadly classified as follows. Engine Alternator Fuel System Voltage regulator Cooling and exhaust systems Lubrication system Battery charger Control panel Main assembly or frame How to size or select generator There are lots of approved methods on sizing an electric generator. However, we want to make it as easy and as simple as possible. First and foremost, we must check to adhere to the codes to ensure safety in standard practice. Let us see what does the code states. NEC states that, where automatic transfer equipment is used, an optional standby system shall comply with 702.4 B2A or B2B in accordance with Article 220. 
but NEC also states, or by another approved method. What does it mean? It only shows that we are allowed by the code to use other methods as long it does not violate their conditions. For full load. The standby source shall be capable of supplying the full load that is transferred by the automatic transfer equipment. For load management. Where a system is employed that will automatically manage the connected load, the standby source shall have a capacity sufficient to supply the maximum load that will be connected by the load management system. Under Section 220.87.1, the code states that, the calculation of a feeder or service load for existing installations shall be permitted to use actual maximum demand to determine the existing load under all of the following conditions. The maximum demand data is available for a one-year period. In our method, we need historical data. Get this three data enabled to proceed for our method. Firstly, we need the maximum demand load of our building. As per mentioned, a historical demand data for the maximum demand within one year period. However, NEC states for exception in case you do not have this data. Exception, if the maximum demand data for a one year period is not available, the calculated load shall be permitted to be based on the maximum demand, the highest average kilowatts reached and maintained for a 15 minute interval, continuously recorded over a minimum 30 day period using a recording ammeter or power meter connected to the highest loaded phase of the feeder or service, based on the initial loading at the start of the recording. The recording shall reflect the maximum demand of the feeder or service by being taken when the building or space is occupied and shall include by measurement or calculation the larger of the heating or cooling equipment load and other loads that may be periodic in nature due to seasonal or similar conditions. The last two data we need are related to air conditioning equipment. Get the running load and starting load of the AC equipment. Let's have some example. Say that we have 15 kilowatts maximum demand in our historical data for our period of one year. Having AC equipment with running load 20 amperes and starting load of 100 amperes. Having these informations. 15 kilowatts maximum demand divide 240 volt supply multiply by 1000 gives us 62.5 amperes. Our 62.5 ampere maximum demand include our load including AC equipment running load. So to get our running load aside from AC equipment, we have 62.5 amperes minus 20 amperes, which give us 42.5 amperes. Now for our AC starting load of 100 amperes, it represent the maximum resurgence load. Although there are ways to lessen the starting load, let us keep it that way as 100 amperes. Getting minimum is equal start load plus run loads. Minimum size is 100 plus 42.5 equals 142.5 amperes. Our minimum size shall be 142.5 times 240 divided by 1000 equals to 34.2 kilowatts. Running load 42.5 amperes. Starting load 100 amperes. And minimum size to be 142.5 amperes. Minimum size of generator shall not be less than 34.2 kilowatts. We go to manufacturer's surge capability chart or table. This is from one of the manufacturer. Assume that we are sizing for a commercial building and three phase equipment. Minimum size having 142.5 amperes, three phase, commercial building and running load 42.5 amperes, knowing that our minimum size shall not be lesser than 34.2 kilowatts. We can say 70 is a good choice for our example. We must select 70 kilowatts. Thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe and like the video. Again, greetings of peace.